passion for music was something that I was born with and I never really analysed it. I just uh, lived, breathed, talked, slept music. Music can express things that words can't. You know, it's a very visual world we live in. The sense of, of sound, organised, abstract sound that music is. Music of all sorts, music concrete, even going out to the countryside and listen to the birds and listen to all the sounds around, that's a sort of music and in many ways it speaks to you the unspeakable the things that you can't really write or read about in in words i think music's accessible for everyone i think we we think that music is is difficult that contemporary music is difficult that you know music is a generational thing that people of this generation don't understand the music of the previous generation and so on. Um, I, I think that there are many different kinds of kinds of music. That's part of its strength, the diversity of music. People put up too many barriers in their heads about, about enjoying music. Also I think the way that music's presented is sometimes a little bit stuffy and, and off-putting. But you don't have to go to concerts to listen to music. You can listen to them at home. You know, and more people now listen to music at the hi-fi on home on CDs or DVDs and so on. And that's a very legitimate way to listen to music as well. And I don't think uh, that music of all sorts has ever been as popular as it is now. It's absolutely everywhere. I think the trumpet has got a very complex character. It can be joyful, it can be dramatic, it can be declamatory, it can be lyrical. Um, I, I think the trumpet can do anything that you want it to do. Music knows no boundaries. All of our musical instruments, whether it be Middle East, Far East, uh, South America and so on, they're all related to one another. All the families that are trumpets of different sort, whether it's bone, gourd, stone or metal trumpets, they're all trumpets. Every country in the world has, has got them and it's the same with stringed instruments. I would say it's a four-dimensional instrument, you know, it's not one, two or three dimension, it's got a fourth dimension as well and there's very few instruments that have that. That's why I think it's, uh, you know, it's an icon of our times, the trumpet. When I was young, I never used to think about being good or bad or anything. I just thought I could play, and I just, I just played. When you're young, you have this sort of hubris. You have this sort of uh, almost or uh, arrogance, you know. Okay, don't sit down in it. It's up. You. Throwing something out. Okay. If I can sort of help the young people of of Scotland now, then that will truly be the culminating point of my career. Advice is the easiest thing to give, but it's the hardest thing to take, and so it's the way that you just mentor uh, as students and try to try to support them whilst they learn for themselves. John is a wonderful, wonderful person down to the earth, no doubt. And not only he's an amazing player, but also he's a top teacher, trumpet teacher in the world. His advice is just to fresh your mind. You get absolutely amazing idea how to improve you play.
that day in St. Paul's Cathedral, it wasn't really the music that was uh, the really exciting thing. It was the, the sound design, if you like, of the whole occasion. Because in the church, the ancient church of St. Paul's, surrounded by a crowd of about two million people outside, the vibrations coming into the church of that multitude, that mass of humanity, and also a joyous feeling uh, as well that everything was right with the world and it was such a fantastic summer's day and there was such a feeling in the nation. I would much rather have been a composer than a trumpet player um, because I just think creating the, the music is the, is the most wonderful thing. But then I, my talent lay in playing the trumpet and so through the trumpet I've just tried to recompose all of the music that I've ever played. I got jobs uh, playing second trumpet with the Festival Ballet and second trumpet with the Northern Sinfonia. And then one day I put in for a job with the LSO as assistant principal trumpet. And lo and behold, the trumpet player there, Howard Smell, liked the way I played and I got the job in the LSO. And so that was my life until just two years ago when I came up to Glasgow to become the principal of the Royal Scottish Academy of Music and Drama. Yes, I think it's the culmination of my, my career now. It's like coming full circle, so it's payback time now for me to the, the country and to the, the people that I owe the most. Psychologically, I think, you become dead without the performing arts of one sort or, or, or another. And music is a great salve to, you know, the, the savage breast, if you like, and to your, your mental state. And so it is like, it is like a brain food, if you like. Yes, music is a f form of communication that fills in all of the unknown cracks that it's very difficult to explain in words. You have to explain in chapters, and, and it's, it is possible to explain in words and novels and, and in the cinema and so on, but for example, take away a film without the music or without the, the sound design and it's totally meaningless. You know, music fills in all of the surroundings, it fills in a lot of the underlying uh, context, the many layers of life. When you look out of the window, you're not only looking at one thing, you're looking at many, many things. And music's one form of in simultaneously saying many things at once.